<laughs> well, uh, good good morning, everybody. Um, I want to thank you all for for joining. Thank you, uh, Valerie, Dan, Terry, um, for being here. Um, I thought we had uh, Barry a minute ago, but um, we seem to have lost lost. Well, my, my name is Ari O'Benson. I am uh, the president and, and, and chief executive officer of the International Institute. And I've been here uh, since the, the, the 1st of February. Um, and uh, accompanying me uh, for this meeting uh, on the on Team International Institute uh, is uh, Gary Broom, uh, Director of Communications and Marketing, who did reach out to you. And, and we have uh, Christina, um, our Senior Manager of Administration and Web Operation. Um, Kelly Moore, our External Relations Manager. And Melissa George, our Senior Development and Events Specialist. Um, this is the team from the International Institute that going to be here with me as we as we engage with you. Um, I am originally from from Cameroon. Um, so that's in Africa and tomorrow is is Africa Day. And I thought to begin this conversation with with an with an African concept. Um, that African concept is Ubuntu. And many of you must have heard about it. But it, as, as Mandela put it, it is the profound sense that we are human only through the humanity of others. That if we are to accomplish anything in this world, it will in equal measure be due to the work and achievement of others. Um, it is within the context and the spirit of, of this concept that uh, being new to the Institute, I thought I should reach out to stakeholders in the community who have been making things happen. And to say that we are only um, going to be able to achieve the ambitious goals that we are setting for ourselves um, through the incredible work that you do in the community. And so I wanted to start by reaching out to you to, to first of all, introduce myself to you. Secondly, talk, uh, learn from you about what, what you're working on, some of the challenges and opportunities that you're facing, and then share with you how we think we can complement the incredible work that you, the, uh, that you are doing already in the diversity, equality, and inclusion space. So that's uh, what we're going to try to do in the next uh, 30 minutes with you all, um, but it may be helpful uh, for me to get to, for the team here to get to meet and know you. I'm assuming that you may all have uh, know yourselves, but um, I, I, it would be helpful if we start with you, your name, your organization, and what you see as challenges or opportunities in the diversity, equality, and inclusion work that you do. Um, and I'm just going to go by the, what I see on the screen. Um, Valerie, uh, thank you for being here. We'll, 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 we'll start with you. Uh, my pleasure. Good afternoon. Oh, no, it's still morning. So good morning, um, Valerie Patton, Chief Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer and President of the Greater St. Louis Foundation at Greater St. Louis, Inc. Um, I look at challenges as opportunities. Uh, what we need uh, are more, let me, let me think about that. So more access to equity um, and which will create opportunity for all. Thank you very much, Valerie. It's good to see you again. And we'll go on to Terry. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Terry Hart. I'm the manager of workforce diversity for BJC Healthcare. Um, we have a team that works on DNI 
across our hospital uh, and service organizations. Uh, I have the pleasure of leading a lot of the workforce effort efforts. So equity is very important um, to our organization uh, and as Val mentioned to our community. And we continue to work on that in terms of um, policy and practice uh, from an HR perspective, um, you know, increasing what our diversity looks like in leadership. Uh, I always tell people we don't have a problem attracting diverse talent to our organization. We have a a problem retaining talent in our organization and developing talent in our organization. And so that is our focus um, today. Thank you very much, Terry. Thank you for being here. Uh, we'll go on to Dan. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dan Lester. I work with uh, Clayco. Uh, we're a design builder um, out of uh, headquartered here in St. Louis and in Chicago. And so Part of my role is being the director of field diversity, inclusion, and culture. So for what we're trying to do, a lot of times when we uh, are looking for, I guess, kind of those real uh, economic um, places of, of opportunity, uh, like Valerie, I believe that challenges bring us opportunities. So when we're looking at those, construction is oftentimes uh, viewed as a way for, for individuals to come into a place and get gainful employment very quickly. Oftentimes you don't necessarily need a, um, you know, don't have to have much more than a, a high school diploma or something of that nature. And then you can get into an apprenticeship program. So my job is to make sure that when we, those folks do come into our job sites, that our site is, is, is equitable and is kind of in a place where it's kind of conducive to what we call the trip, the training, retention, investment in and promotion of those individuals. Uh, the, the, the beauty of being in those places, especially in a city like St. Louis, uh, where we have union labor, uh, it kind of runs the day in our industry, commercially, I should say, at least. Um, it, it helps the individuals if they can get to that place where they get where they journey out. And so our objective is to look at better ways. And Clayco really has a all-inclusive approach from workforce to businesses. Uh, my boss, Sandra, couldn't be on the call today, but I'm certainly reporting back. Uh, and just an all complete complete and complete and inclusive perspective on how we view diversity and inclusion in our industry and what we can do. And we, we cover development, we cover design and architecture, and we also cover the building aspect of it. So we we're hand, our hands are in a lot of different places. So I'm just here to represent uh, what we can do and continue to lead and certainly lead St. Louis uh, in the right direction. Thank you very much, Dan, for being here. Um, we're going to turn to Desiree. Desiree, I think we are on mute. We, yeah. I am on mute. Um, good morning. Um, thank you for having me and um, good morning to all of my colleagues. Um, I'm Desiree Coleman. I'm uh, a part of a group that's called um, Diverse Customer Segment. So we spent like the last three years looking at how we can ensure that our managers, particularly that frozen middle, are up to speed um, on our expectations around how they lead inclusively and that we put in some accountability measures. And I think this next iteration of the work is looking at how we ensure that our products and services are able to uh, benefit diverse communities. And so it's looking at um, ensuring we have the right suite of products, but then also um, listening to diverse customers to ensure we're um, enabling our financial capabilities to get to their respective communities. So happy to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Desiree. Um, and, and thank you all for, for being here. Uh, we had um, five other people who have not been able to join us for one reason or the other, but uh, we, we, it gives us the opportunity to make the most of the time that we have here. Um, I just wanted to, um, as I said at the very beginning, I started out at the International Institute on the 1st of February. The International Institute has been here in St. Louis for um, uh, over 100 years, and we are celebrating our 102nd anniversary this year. And in those years, the Institute has played a significant role um, in, in fostering inclusion um, within this uh, community. And, you know, I, I, I want to, I know the Institute has been known for its work 
uh, with refugees and, and, and immigrants that it's done for, for all of this time. But much more than that, the Institute really provides, um, has a long-term vision to build a more inclusive society. And so it goes beyond just providing services. It also goes to providing opportunities, creating pathways for, for people, for the community to be more inclusive, engaging the community, educating, inspiring action within the community. And one of the things that I really want to focus on um, here at the Institute is, is changing the narrative so that we, we are seen as um, an organization that is really working with stakeholders towards building a more inclusive St. Louis. And in the context of this, we are embarking this year on developing a strategic plan for the International Institute. And whilst it's a strategic plan for the International Institute, I am hoping that it's a strategic plan for a more inclusive St. Louis. It is a community strategic plan. And to kick off that strategic plan, I wanted to talk to um, people like you who are working towards building it, not only inclusion within your, your companies, but in essence, inclusion within the community. Um, how we can complement your work, how we can work together to achieve our overall goals. So we're kicking off that strategic planning process this May, and we will be reaching out to engage with each one of you on some of the expectations um, that you may have that an organization like the International Institute can provide to support your work. Mindful, uh, mindful of the fact that be, besides just the company is the community and that the company in itself is part of the wider community and how can the work that you do have an impact on the wider, com com uh, the wider community and how can we help. So that's the first thing that we are working on this year and hopefully we'll be rolling out our plan um, in October this year. The next thing that we're working on which I'm sure uh, most of you must have heard of or know about is the Festival of Nations. And we are having a new dimension to the Festival of Nations, which has been um, running in the community in its, in its, in, in its current variation um, since 2001. And this year, we've, we're really focusing the, 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 the Festival of Nations around the theme, bridging cultures, inspiring action where our hope is that we use the Festival of Nations as an opportunity to engage the wider community to see and, and, and understand the rich diversity that this community has, but even more importantly, how can we inspire action? And one of the ways that we're hoping to do this is through something we're calling Inclusion St. Louis which is uh, going to be a weekly speaker series beginning from June 21st, right up to um, the last weekend of August, 11 weeks in a row, where we're going to be inviting uh, diversity, equality, and inclusion officers like you, as well as community stakeholders to have a conversation around this question. Is an inclusive St. Louis possible? And if it is, how can we make it possible? And we will be grateful to have your perspective um, um, and have a conversation with you. These are all going to be virtual conversations and will run on Monday mornings at 11 for the community. We're also going to be collaborating um, with the program on channel 11 to have a, a, a rerun of a summarized version of this engagement on, on, on channel 11 and we'll continue all the way until November. So we're gonna have significant content, but all of this conversation that we're going to be having is going to inform the way that the International Institute complements your work. So I will, we will be sending out invitations for, for that, but there are also um, activities that we're going to be running for the Festival of Nations. So more than just a weekend as we used to do before, we're actually kicking off the activities of the Festival of Nations um, on, on uh, June 19th, 
which is the weekend of World Refugee Day, and it's going to run to the last weekend of August. And we will have a menu of programs and activities that individual groups, families um, can participate in um, during this period. We'll have pop-up dinners, um, um, live shows, live musical shows on last Fridays of the month. And then we will, uh, we'll, the, the kickoff will be an in-person event here at the International Institute. And we're also going to close with an in-person event, which would be pro uh, probably at the Tower Grove Park. So we, we, we are hoping to use this uh, over 60 days of engagement with this community to, to, to push the envelope towards this question of is an inclusive family possible? Um, so I'm just going to pause here and, and um, see if there are any questions with reference to uh, the two items that I raised, the strategic plan and, and the Festival of Nations, and particularly um, in, um, the inclusion St. Louis speaker series. And the key question, is an inclusive St. Louis possible? If, if there are any questions, comments, or thoughts with reference to that, how you can get involved, what, we'll, we'll be happy to take, to take those. And then I'll close by, by just introducing to you one last subject, and uh, I'll let you get back to your business instead of, But so far, any questions, comments, or thoughts on, on how we can support you? Hi, this is Desiree. Um, I'm really excited about the Festival of Nations and this kind of hybrid approach and also, um, you know, sort of spreading it out. Have y'all started to promote and share and, you know, when can we expect to hear uh, more and then, you know, how can we be helpful in spreading it to our networks as well? Thank you very much, Desiree. This is we 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 wanted to have this conversation with you all before taking that bold step. Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, with, with that Ubuntu concept, I really we really believe in engaging the community in the process of our activities. Um, we are hoping that by sometime around the first of June, we will begin to engage the community with promotions. But so far, we have not. Um, with your blessing, Desiree, we will begin <laughs> our, our promotion. But really, we just wanted to have this conversation with some key stakeholders before moving forward. Um, happy that you you like the the idea and the concept, and we you know we certainly would love for you to be involved, and we can reach out to you and and make and offer you some opportunities of of getting involved. But for sure. Even just helping us spread the word is, is going to be highly appreciated. Having your team members get involved with their families will be highly appreciated. And any other form of support and ideas would be greatly welcome. Yeah, this is Terry. I, I think uh, kudos for the uh, extended format. I think that will serve well. Um, but yes, when you have any flyers produced or anything like that, it would be nice to be able to share them within our organization. We have a kind of a, it's called Yammer, but it's like a Facebook page where we put lots of things and that would be how we could really inform our employees to get engaged with their families and introduce them to um, what's gonna be happening for Festival of Nations. So looking forward to it. Great, thank you very much. We'll, we'll note that and follow up on that. Any, any other questions from Valerie, Dan? Any, okay, great. Well, we're going to um, be uh, reaching out to you all. I, now, I just wanted to highlight the the, the speaker series, the inclusions and those. Um, and I'm hoping that I can have some of you, if not all of you, why not, um, on one of the sessions, the 11 sessions, uh, and I will be reaching out and um, we're going to have some, some moderators from the community um, that will be engaging in this conversation. And it's really just to, to talk about the aspirations of the corporations that really um, help this community thrive about what the, your, your thoughts are about inclusion. 
And that could be very helpful in sowing the seeds within the community of how we work together towards building a more inclusive St. Louis. We would also be learning from you about ways in which we can um, play our own role as an organization in, um, in, in building a more inclusive St. Louis. So that we're looking forward to, to this hybrid format and I'm really excited about the opportunity that it poses. Um, did, I, did I miss any questions, Christina? I've not been looking at the, at the chat. No, you get all the questions. Okay, good. With, with that said, let me um, just touch on the next subject, which um, will, will bring us to the end of, um, and, and uh, you all um, know of, um, of, uh, I'm assuming that you all know, uh, Anna Crossman uh, worked here for 42 years serving this community. And Anna, we are working this year to have a retirement uh, party for, for Anna some, at some point in November. And to, we've been working on a way in which we could honor the legacy of, of Anna Crossling and at the same time, um, make it an opportunity for this community. And so we are working on um, something called the Anna Crossling Center for Multicultural Excellence. Um, so it's, we see this, uh, I, um, the way I see it as, um, an, you know, an umbrella of the, all the activities that we currently provide, but we want to create an opportunity where we can think about the future of St. Louis and have a center that can accelerate our development to arrive at that future. With, with the, the Multicultural Center is going to provide um, expertise, research, resources, tools for community stakeholders who are looking to foster excellence in the area of inclusion within communities, within companies, within corporations, within organizations. And we're hoping that we can build the center, not just as the International Institute, but that we can build this together as a community. And so we want to be reaching out to each one of you um, to offer opportunities for participation in the development of, of, this, of this center. It looks like um, we are really thinking that St. Louis can become um, what my French background pushes me to use the term avant-gardist. So it means being at the forefront of fostering this conversation around in inclusion, but doing so not just as one organization. Yes, the International Institute will lead, but what if we could build a movement? What if we could build a community that is working in this regard, facilitating the work that you do every day providing you with answers and solutions and tools and best practices from around the country and around the world that can help you achieve uh, your goals. That's what we're working on. We are hoping that we, 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 we will uh, kick off the presentations of this, of this center at the end of August, just when we're done with the Festival of Nations. And it, it's, it's, its launch will, be, will actually take place in an event on November 19, when we uh, honor uh, Anna Crossman for her 42 years of service uh, to this community. So that's the one next big thing that we're working on. The three things that we are, are we're currently very invested in is our strategic plan, the Festival of Nations, particularly inclusions and Louis speaker series, and also the Anna Crossling Center for Multicultural Excellence. And we thought that we should share that with you. And, and if there are any questions, uh, we'll be happy to take those at this, at this point with reference to that. I will take comments to questions, comments, any, any one of those would. would um, I, this is Terry, I just have one question. So when you mentioned that center, is it something separate a separate building logistically from the International Institute or is it or is it just an I 
idea? Well, it's going to live within the International Institute. Um, hopefully, if it, grow, uh, if it grows within the projections that we have, um, it, it, it should grow into, it, it may end up having the, the, the structures that are necessary for it to exist almost independently. But at this point, it's going to exist within uh, the International Institute almost as a program in itself here. But this is really um, designed to respond to, to the needs that we see. Um, the question of, um, of, of inclusion has become even more relevant if we need to build a, a, a future for not just this community, but for, but for this country where, um, every, where we can create opportunities for everyone to achieve their greatest potential. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, um, provide programs, resources, and tools that the community can benefit from. Um, and that is offered by the International Institute. Thank you. Yeah. Any, any, any other questions, comments, or thoughts? Well, well, see, see, no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to um, to end by thanking you all for, for being here. It's a, we've really been very honored to have you all here. We will be reaching out to each one of you with the details of the this programs. We just wanted to get the opportunity to get to to engage with you and get you get to know us, and and um, we will work out the details of how you all can get involved in one way or the other with each one of these programs that I, that I raised. I am going to end by saying, in, in, in I like using African quote, which is, uh, that's where I come from. Uh, uh, there, there is an African quote that says, the child who is not embraced by the village would burn it down to feel its warmth. And for us, this question of inclusion cannot be taken lightly because those who do not feel embraced um, end up becoming our biggest liability. How can we embrace them so that they too can help us as a community achieve our, our greatest potential? And, and that's why this is such a burning issue and, and a priority for us, and obviously a priority for each one of you. I wanna thank you all for being here today and hoping that this is just the beginning of our conversation. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. have a, Take have care, everyone. Okay. Wonderful day and, and great Memorial Day weekend to you. Bye bye. All. Same. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>